ladies and gentlemen, George Kittle. Yeah. Oh. All right, George. So tell me. <laughs> what's up? Tell me about what's going on here. You know what I mean? <laughs> tell me what's going on. Wow. With this helmet that it was not to be worn <laughs> in a conversation with you talking about taking it, taking the top off a little bit. If you're direct TV, George, oh. tell me about it. Man, what a softball layup pitch. You guys are just so talented. I really appreciate that. Thank you, bro. No, I think the DirecTV just, they just wanted to show everybody, man, you don't need a satellite on your on your roof anymore, man. They're streaming now on the go, at home, whatever you need to do. And so we thought nothing on your roof, on your roof, you're like, my hair's long on the, on the top, short on the side. We just reverse that. And it turns out I look completely different, but at the same time, still handsome. Yeah, incredibly handsome. Some You're people. George Kittle. I mean, that's why you do those nude ads <laughs> with those other companies. But let's stay with the DirecTV. Feels like this is a move that should have been, was made a while back for college students. DirecTV did this, I think. Now they're doing it for everybody, it feels like, George. Yeah, it's for everybody. And the nice thing is it's for all pro football games and all college football games. Oh. So whatever you want to watch, you want to watch Ohio State and Green Bay, you can do that, AJ. It's all whatever you want to watch, man. Anybody can do whatever they want to do. If you want to watch Iowa and Green Bay, yeah. Iowa and the Bears, whatever you guys want to do, guys, it's uh, you have access to it and just stream. Uh, for more information on DirecTV, how to enter for your chance to win the helmet and uh, check yourself out with a nothing on your roof hairstyle, go directly to directtv.com backslash nothing on your roof. That is D I R E C T V dot com backslash nothing on your roof. And you can maybe win one of these helmets. <laughs> Damn. Oh. And maybe you can see how you would look if you got mm. the nothing on your roof cut that George Kittle had for this commercial. Now, I will read the bottom anecdotes that we got sent here. Okay. Uh, just, Please. George Kittle footballed helmets, do's and don'ts. Right here at the bottom. <laughs> Boom. Do's and don'ts. Good to know. Do describe the helmet as a fun novelty keepsake item. I think that's easy to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, that's I, easy. I, I think we said, don't wear the helmet on air, uh -oh, it says. No. And Why? also, also, oh, do it. don't suggest the helmet could be used on the field during a real game. It well, like it could. sorry about it. it. Could. I'm sending this to every youth league <laughs> in the fucking country. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Uh, just in case, just in case anybody was confused that this is not a game regulation helmet. Thank you for the do's and don'ts. That it's was very. Not, it's not. Are not, you sure? No, JT's Why can't trying you wear? Put a helmet on. Like, Put one on. I mean, Why do you want to find out? Yeah. I, I don't you want to find out? Put this on, Debo. You want to find out, dude? <laughs> Don't put the helmet on. It's like, what the fuck? Why'd you send me one? Uh, I'm gonna put the helmet on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. This is great for DirecTV, though. We are incredibly pumped about it, and uh, I would like to see who ends up winning one of these helmets because it, you see it. It's hard not to just be like, what? That is awesome. So sweet. This is a good idea, George. Yeah. Speaking of good idea, Thank George, you. no problem. How are you doing, brother? Get the ideas flowing? How's the team feel? Because, you know, uh, we've a lot of drama being chatted about your team outside. Do you guys hear it inside or no? Uh, how's that all go? Uh, you know what? It's hard to hear a lot of drama when you're in the middle of training camp. You're just waking up and you're practicing and you're in meetings all day. Then you go home and you just go to sleep. So there's not really a lot of time to hear the drama and the outside noise. Um, but, like, for us as the 49ers, like, I know that the guys who are going through contract negotiations, they're doing what they think is best for them. And we all support them in that. And as players, we're just going to show up there. We're going to practice every single day and just see what we can get out of the guys that are practicing. And so, you know, I got to ask, you know, like, how tough is it that Trent Williams is there? And, well, yeah, he's a Hall of Fame first ballot guy, like, and he's going to play really good football for a long time. But I'm getting incredible reps with our backup left tackle, Jalen Moore, that I wouldn't get otherwise. And, you know, if something, if Trent's not playing, I have no idea what's going to happen. But I'm getting these valuable reps with Jalen. And when Trent Williams shows up, he's inevitably just going to be amazing again. And I'm not going to really need that much practice with him because he's just better than everybody else. Okay, so let's talk about when he shows back up because it feels like the Niners have had a little bit of this over the last couple of years with contracts and obviously superstars, and they've always been able to work it. I don't think people will fully understand that when Trent Williams comes back in that locker room when it gets figured out, hey, let's go. Now we move forward, right? Isn't that kind of how the entire locker room feels about it, everybody, especially IU oh, or yeah. Trent or anybody else? Oh, yeah. No, like, as an NFL football player, like, not everything's guaranteed. You know, it's the NFL. It's not for long. So, like, you want everyone to take advantage of the situation that they're in and make as much money as they possibly can and, you know, do what they've dreamt about since they were kids and make money for their families. And so, you know, we all we're, we all have their backs and we understand the position that they're in. So, it, there's no bad butter like that. So, whenever they show up, whenever whatever happens, happens, uh, it's pretty seamless. You're just right back into the flow of things. Got it, AJ. George, how's uh, this training camp been compared to others in the past? We've heard multiple players throughout the league kind of say that this was kind of a tougher training camp than they may have had. There might be more like a sense of urgency for some teams. Has that uh, been the case for you guys? 
Um, you know, I think Coach Shanahan does a really good job about the way we've uh, scheduled our practices. And, you know, the way that, like, you know, we get guys ramped up to go out there and play football, how we do reps and stuff like that. Coach Shanahan does a great, great job of putting us in really, like, you know, do or die moments, um, you know, situational football. And just, like, having those learning experiences is really good. I, I do feel like our team has a great sense of urgency. You know, it's a little bit different when you're missing, you know, a couple of pieces out there. Like, you kind of you kind of notice that. But what's nice is you get to see other guys take advantage of those opportunities. And, you know, like a guy like Chris Conley has played really f- well for us at X this year uh, without Ayuk being there. Um, you know, our offensive line, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces for it, but it's just kind of fun to see guys out there. And at the end of the day, you have Brock Purdy throwing to, you know, me, Debo, um, on the defense. You still got Fred and Nick Bosa is still pretty decent at football, I'm pretty sure. I think he has like 100 sacks. And that's nothing against our offensive line. That's just how good he is. And so we're, we have a sense of urgency and we're practicing hard. And it was a tough training camp, but, you know, yesterday was a super high day for us. And I think our offense came out on top, which was kind of fun to see. Yeah, I'd love to have a little a dub over the other side uh, of the roster in training camp. Because if one side's dominating a bit, boy, it does get loud in meetings and cafeteria and everything like that. Shout out to the offense. Yeah. Shout out yeah, to yeah. the offense. Stop. Thank you. Hey, no, congratulations you. to you guys. Without Trent and Ayuk, you know, that, uh, that is, yeah. you guys should be rubbing that in their face as well, potentially. You guys see what the fuck's going on. <laughs> uh, you talked about uh, Bosa still being great at football and being incredibly jacked, yeah. which he is. There's another guy, too, that allegedly, go ahead, Con Man. Yeah, George, has Brock Purdy been getting drug tested? Because it <laughs> seems like he's on PEDs. There's some before and after photos in this offseason. He looks incredibly jacked now. Uh, what did he do? And did you just kind of give him your playbook? Like, hey, you got to do arms for 30 reps every single day you know actually i think the most impressive thing with brock right now is like he's like turning into a mini mccaffrey slash bosa and just has huge quads and it's just like i'm a tall and lint like i'm skinny guys so like i just don't get that like i have nice quads but they're not like bosa which is it i'm a little jealous but it is what it is but purdy just he fits in that category really well and uh yeah you know he looks a lot better uh like just bigger <laughs> faster stronger which is nice to see and it just looks more mature. And, Pat, it's hard to give, a, like, a thoughtful answer every time I look at the screen. And I, just I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> it's really what? tough right now. Come on. But you look incredible. Right You're just Jeez. I don't. Dude, don't God. support the business, brother. Right here, Bob. Maybe that's I'm why you weren't supposed to wear it, because I would get distracted. Oh, okay. They said, we know George better than you do. Mm-hmm. Okay. You put that helmet on, you're not going to get shit out of him. But you just gave a great answer about Brock Purdy there. How about mentally? You know, how about around the building? And I know, like, being a young quarterback is tough because you're being asked to basically be the CEO of a professional operation. Now, I know Shanahan is obviously the offensive leader and you got stars everywhere. But as a quarterback, there's going to be expectations of you chirping and talking and motivating and everything like that. How has he done with that? Have you seen any growth other than just his biceps and his quads? Have you seen any growth behind the scenes that maybe we don't get to see? I think one of the biggest things I've noticed, um, <laughs> like you can give like the, you know, the professional answer and say, you know, he comes into work every single day. He's the same guy. He's consistent. But what I've really liked about Brock ever since he got into the huddle, his rookie season, he's a guy that like he speaks with confidence. And when you're a co- quarterback with confidence, like the players, like everyone looks at you, you have everyone's attention 24 seven and there's no BS behind it. Like it's just who he, he, he truly is. And one thing I really, I think noticed just this off season because it was his first healthy off season. He got to do all of OTAs. He had to go away, take some time off, and come back for training camp. Is I think he just has a, a new confidence in the offense, and like he's kind of taking the reins on it. I think him and Kyle have like discussion about what his favorite things are, and those are the things we try to get better at. So then, when he's at his most confident, he's getting guys like me, Debo McCaffrey, Juice, Juwan Jennings, the football, you know, in third downs and third and long. So I think he's just taking control of the offense. It's fun to see that. Yeah. We're big Brock Purdy supporters over here. Love him. We have Brock parties yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. He's so good at the football. He is so good at the he football. He is good at the football. Hey, I have a question for you, Pat. How was um, Ireland? Buddy, it was awesome. <laughs> it, looked, it looked like a riot. It was, it was quite a runaway, a little bit of a gong show. Yeah. Hey, I would recommend it 10 out of 10. I, would, I, I don't know if I could survive another trip. And uh, to to Dublin, but we got about a year to prepare. I don't think I'm gonna drink until then. But buddy, it was awesome. I mean, just like wow. I don't know what everybody's thoughts are on like should Dublin be a place that I travel to throughout my life? You should. Mm-hmm. You absolutely <laughs> yes. should. It is a blast. It's like a you know hard working town. Mm-hmm. They they are made. They will love American football. That town and that place will continue to grow their love for American football, so I think there's going to be more opportunities for it. But, yeah, a little bit of a gong show there, George, you know, because the people in the pub couldn't hear us. The PA wasn't working, 
So I like, <laughs> so I, all those people could not hear us. They were there, they, and we we're sitting, what, 10 feet away from yeah, them pretty yep. much. So I decided no early that I'm just, you know what? I'm going to chug 10 of these things for the, the show for the boys here. Yep. You know, the Irish lads that are in the bar. That's not the great decision, you know, because that led to about 15 more, and sure. then there were shots of whiskey. Right. And then, you know, it was a long night, but they took care of me, which I'm mm. very grateful for. And we got to experience Dublin in a way with Seamus that I don't think anybody ever... It was a dream, George. Wow. It was a fucking dream. The, legit. Dude, Seamus there, too, is just so sick. That is so fun for you guys. I went to Dublin, I think, like two years ago for a wedding. Alex Mack, you know, the former center for the Falcons, and then... Uh, he was with us for a year, and I we got in, and like at 10 a.m., me and uh, Claire went to get breakfast, and two guys next to me were just drinking Guinness. I was like, well, I guess it's, uh, I guess I'll have a beer. You have Sounds to, like a good idea. You have to, that's why there were some people that didn't love the show. I'm like, what the fuck you want me to do? Come on. <laughs> Come on. What do you, what do you, I literally, what, they, these people can't hear us either. It's so five o'clock. Imagine what that's going to become if we're not engaging with them at all. It's like, when in Rome is a statement for a long time. We were literally in the place. We yeah. were in mm -hmm. a pub in Dublin. With so many good lads. So, so many, many lads. lads. So, so many good, so many, so many good lads. Speaking of lads, younger lads, D Butt's got a question for you, George. Yeah, George, you've been around for a while. I think going into year eight, and uh, obviously one yes, of the sir. best tight ends in the game. A lot of great tight ends coming out of Hawkeyes as well. And they start tight end you. Do you find it that uh, a lot of young guys reach out to you now? Um, I would say yes to no. I, I've had a lot of college guys uh, hit me up and like high school uh, guys too, just like asking for drills and stuff that I think would help them out. And I try to respond to uh, as many as I possibly can. But, you know, I've worked with a couple college guys in the offseason. And then definitely with the um, like the younger NFL guys, we had a bunch of first and second year guys there uh, this year. And whether they were like on active last year or even practice squad trying to earn their spot onto an active roster, um, they ask a lot of questions. I mean, like, how often do you get a, like Greg Olson and Travis Kelsey, Evan Ingram in a room and be able to ask them questions about what they did when they were a rookie and like what they like what what they could learn from them and how could they get a little bit better as a rookie or a second year guy. So I think it's just like, it's invaluable information and at the same time too. Like after every preseason game, I got to go up and I got to see all the tight ends that were at tight. End okay. Meet. So uh, what's your guys schedule right now? Uh, you got four days off, I guess this weekend, I guess that's NFL mandated. What is your schedule going into next week? Um, let's see Friday night. I'm going to hang out uh, probably with my wife, maybe play a couple of video games. Shout out Claire. Um, nice. Shout out Claire. And then, Saturday night, we have a player's party at Coach Shanahan's house, which wow. he throws every single year, Whoa. which is a good time. Is that the one where he threw the football across the thing? I think that was a different one. No, that, that was just him hanging out in San Diego one offseason with John Lynch when he, like, threw a football into, like, a pizza oven or something like that. Yeah, on the other side of the street or whatever. Sick. Joe Staley. He just, yeah. yeah, that was yeah. with Joe Staley. Yeah, legend. I, legend. What game? What games you playing? I like that. Good question. Uh, you know what's crazy? I just got into Elden Ring. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get into that. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna. There, my Claire's not gonna be happy about the time I spend on that one. Um, what is this? Is this that, like what is Elden Ring? It's like uh, car, uh, what's it like? Randy Orton just said he's. Yeah, played, he said he's playing he's, hours. He's six hundred hours. Six hundred hours is how long he's played that. Yeah, he's talking to Cody Rhodes with the Wheatley vodka. Yeah, yeah. that's a great conversation. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, and Randy is. Orton, obviously, living legend, so is Cody. But what is it? Is it like a uh, Dungeons and Dragons what? type game? What type of game yep. is it? Sure, kind of like that. Yeah, kind of a mythic thing. You beat a bunch of bosses. You get to customize your person. Oh, yeah, here you go. Spells, fighting. It's an MMORPG. I, like, I'm, I'm thirty. I'm thirty minutes into it, so I can't give you a, a great description of it. Do you stink at but these types of games, or you're very good at these types of games? Um, I'm pretty good at these games. I haven't played an RPG in a while, uh, but I'll, I'll get back into it. I was a big Mass Effect guy, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is pretty similar to it. But uh, that, and I play a lot of Rocket League. Oh, that's I the soccer Rocket with League. the cars. Yep. Mm hmm. Always, so much fun. Always been a gamer? Yeah. No, like, uh, yeah, Halo 3 is my oh, entire man. identity in middle school and high school. <laughs> well, let's talk about college a little bit. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, George, I'm sure you've seen the NCAA is completely fucking blackballing Coach Ferentz, uh, <laughs> suspending him for the first game. We all know he didn't do anything wrong, okay, but they'll slap on, they'll slap him on the wrist, give him this recruiting violation. Um, it's sure. bullshit. You don't need to comment on it. I know you agree with me. Most Iowa fans do, but I don't know if you've looked at our schedule this year. Um, I'm kind of feeling a home playoff game, you know, in the first inaugural 12-team playoff. What are uh, your expectations for Iowa this year? you got to get the quarterback figured out, obviously. But uh, beyond that, what well, do you think? Do you, you guys do. You got that transfer from Michigan a couple mm -hmm. years ago that uh, Kirk cheated to get. Yeah, exactly. And we probably well, won't be going back to the portal anytime soon. Tim Lester. Tim. First, yeah. first, I'll say free Kirk. Thank free, Kirk. Free, free Kirk. Kirk. Thank free Kirk. Free Kirk. 
Yep, Kirk's dogs, free Kirk. Um, besides that, I would say, you know what? You know the defense is going to play at an incredibly high level. You know you have the top two special teams in the in the country, not number two with LeVar Woods as a special teams coordinator. And I just think if the offense is, can just score 10 to 14 points a game, <laughs> the defense the defense is going to score seven, or the special teams is. <laughs> And so, like, if you that's an average of 21 points per game, and you're going to win a lot of football games doing that. So let's just win the games that we're supposed to, upset one or two guys, and then let Kinnick get really loud. Like, yep, yep, I like all those. Would, are we at Ohio State? At awesome. Ohio State, yeah. We'll that That'll be fun. Wait, wait, I'm against when Washington. Washington. What, what's the date on that? October 12th, at, which is a stacked college football card. Washington that is too. so sick. No, it's at no, home. Washington. It's at home. Okay, okay, gotcha. It's at home. Uh, oh, home. yeah. You got home Northwestern, home Wisconsin. You're at UCLA. Uh, Need it. You're at Maryland. You're home against Nebraska on senior day. Big. Which, yep. Who knows what rules team's going to look like then, legitimately. We, yeah. we we have no idea. All I know is that Iowa versus Nebraska, it's George Kittle versus Will Compton, and my record's pretty good. Tell him, George. Will Compton yeah. just interviewed Peyton. I believe they yeah. interviewed and he So got, cool. He got Peyton to do the mm-hmm. – <laughs> <Yep. laughs> I love Will. I, I open my phone and I see Will Compton's face, and I'm like – it's going to be a good day. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, be a great day. day for the boys. Hey, same with you, man. You bring great vibes all the time. That's a massive piece, I think, of your success. Did you enjoy the receiver documentary thing? Did you enjoy that last I, year? I really did. Um, you know, it was actually funny. I was a really hard no when they first asked me. And then it was actually Claire convinced me. She was like, first, like, we watched a couple episodes of the quarterbacks, and they did a great job of, like, just showing behind the scenes of those guys. And then she was like, hey, this is something that you're going to be able to show your kids in, like, 10 years. And it's like a very unique experience. So, like, thinking like that, I was like, yeah, this will be really fun. And the whole process was awesome. NFL Films did the whole thing. We got a girl with the same, like, video crew every single time. So, you get, like, you get to build a relationship with the film crew. And it really wasn't that invasive. Like, they only came to your house and you asked them, like, hey, they're like, hey, can we shoot something this week? And be like, no. And they're like, okay, sounds good. We'll ask you again next week. Like, they were very, they worked with us in every way possible. It was fun to watch you and Claire and your family and everything learn about you. And I think that was Peyton's big pitch whenever he did quarterback the first time, uh, obviously with Omaha. And he asked Patrick Mahomes, and Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid both said, Peyton, you would never do this ever. Like, this, why are you asking? And then Peyton gave it's a story true. about how, you know, his kids, Mosley and Mark, like, they don't eat, no, they don't get to see what it looked like, what one day of my life, what work looked like, how people talk, how I talked, how we went about our business. He was like, so I do wish, actually, I would have been able to do something like this. You have it forever, and I think you looked incredibly cool and good. And it seemed like your teammates love you, and that continues every single offseason. This past offseason, you did something special down there in Nashville. Go ahead. Tom. Yeah, George, before the uh, Titans preseason game, I saw that you had all the boys over the house to uh, work out. First off, good for you. You've done very well. Uh, but was this, was this mandatory? Did everyone have to uh, come to the barn and work out in the field? Or how, did, how cool was this? How did this work out? Oh, man. Another thing that was my wife's idea. She goes, hey, you guys are coming to Nashville. Because um, they, they, they tell you if you're not going to play in the preseason game. And if you're not playing in a preseason game, they always require a workout. And they, we either go to a local college or a local high school. And... We are like, well, let's just go out to our place. So my dad, being the lawyer he is, he worked up a little deal, a little, a little thing with the Niners, signed a waiver. He's good at waivers. <laughs> and uh, had all the boys out for like a two-hour workout. And it was all the guys who didn't play. So it was a really fun experience. You know, it's, it's a place I take a lot of pride in. I spent a lot of time in there, you know, basically five days a week minimum, uh, all off season, just working with like all my friends. And so the fact that I get to bring my teammates out here, some guys I've been teammates with for a long time and just kind of show them how I do things, have them on the property, uh, chef made them like we had barbecue pulled pork, oh. barbecue chicken sandwiches, oh. super tasty. So the boys were well fed oh. and uh, just an overall great experience. I just and I like showing guys what you know a little bit of land looks like as opposed to living in a big city. Yeah, and we were supposed to swing by and experience a cold tub. You have a full setup over there. You have like a yeah. I- I got spa. I have a I have a sauna, a couple ice tubs, a hot tub. You know, every day for the guys. You know, we we do laundry. We do. You know, we got tub shorts. We got towels. AJ, come on down and get in the sauna with your boy. Do you do loops? You got loop. Yeah, you got do mesh I do bags loops? Or I'm, uh, we got mesh bags. Okay, smart. I was That's a like great setup. The loops kind of an intru- a situation. At TST weird. at TST the soccer tournament we did this past yeah. summer. Uh, they were a loop system for your uniform only in the tournament we clean it. So, like, you put the jersey, yeah. shorts, socks on a loop. We will wash it. We will get it to you before your next game. It was like, that was 
Very nice of them to be able to do that. We had some boys on our team, the arena boys, that hadn't done laundry in a while. Sure. You know, sure. so that, uh, that loop became, yeah. well, I need yep. next Tuesday's shirt, actually, yeah. and also some underwear and uh, maybe a pair of jorts in this thing. So some loops were packed, <laughs> you know, complete the rent. And they, to TST's credit, they, they said, fuck it, enough. <laughs> they took, they opened that. Not doing this. We're not doing this. And it was That's quite awesome. A, yeah, so I've always been a bad guy myself. The loops, though, very, very efficient. Yeah. Speaking of Nashville good times, d has got a question for you. Yeah, how was it celebrating with uh, Bryson DeChambeau after he won uh, U.S. Open down there in Nashville? Dude, that was just a wild experience. We had, uh, it was the third day of Titan U, and all it is, it's, we were like at the Vanderbilt for like two hours doing like a little pass pro stuff, and then uh, then we had this big pool party. We were in at a cool house, and we had a couple like food trucks and stuff like that. We're playing drinking games in the pool. They had a chipping green, so like guys are, you know, chipping. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, uh, Liv, Liv is here and the, the Bryson is going to come over with the trophy. And I was like, ha, really? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and so he just showed up. He was, uh, he was such a cool guy. Um, he passed around the trophy to like, I don't think he expected 40 people to chug beer out of the trophy. But it went around the base of the no, entire that was coffee. Like, that was table. apple juice. Yeah. It wasn't beer. Remember, we had coffee on Friday in Dublin. You were drinking apple juice there. It's all good. Yeah. It, was, it was Bud Light. What? <laughs> <laughs> And it goes all the way around. And my mom even got it. She goes, I'm doing this too. My mom, she turned 65 in two weeks. And she had, she enjoyed herself as well. I was like, Mom, good for you. Way to be an absolute stallion. Hey, Nashville's awesome, huh? Oh, my gosh. I love that place, man. I, I can't. I'm like, I'm looking forward to the point of my career uh, where I get to live in Nashville for the entire year. But till the wheels fall off, baby. Dude, and it feels like it's going to be forever because of how you take care of yourself and how good a shape you are. And it feels like thank you. You're you're in your prime for what the last six years it feels mm -hmm. like, and it's no stopping. You feel strong, body feel good. Are you same playing weight and everything that you were last year and years in the past? Yeah, you know, at the end of the last season, because of my injuries, I got down to like 214, and I got back up to 242 before the season started. I was pretty pumped about that. Oh, yeah, I saw like a graph, like a that was headline, a wild one. A 40-pound swing or something was like the meme. Yeah. That, that's real. That actually happened. Yeah, that happened. Um, I literally, I, I oh. said, because I, I had like surgery, I had a couple, like I couldn't do any workouts. And when I don't work out, I lose weight very fast. And so I was like 214, and my wife looks at me, and she goes, are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm not okay. No, I feel She's Louise woman. Hold on. So protein shakes like DeChambeau. We're doing protein shakes, forced eating. Oh, yeah. You are oh, yeah. full time. Oh, yeah, all the time. Protein shakes, as much food as I possibly can, and as much lifting as I possibly can to just get the body back to what it was. And feeling great now, which is really fun. It feels good going into – I'm like 10 days away from playing a football game. Yeah, real one. Yeah. One that actually matters. 13. Yeah. Woo! Monday night. Monday night Jets. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I forgot Ooh. Jets coming to town Monday night. That's opener for Monday Night Football, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's going to be Jets. It'll be really fun. Unbelievable. Gonna be Thursday, Kansas City, Baltimore. Friday, Green mm -hmm. Bay, Philly. Saturday is going to be a stacked college football lineup because that's what college football is every week this year. Every week. Yeah. Stacked. And then opening Sunday, and then Jets Niner. Mm -hmm. Let's go, George! Come on now. Go Football's to... back, baby. Yes, it is. And you can get a cool <laughs> hat uh, helmet. <laughs> Uh, a yep. football helmet. How, why do you think they said don't wear it? They said that so I do wear it. They said it yeah. so people yeah. put it on. I think they, they got you. You think they that played me there? Smart. Yeah. yeah, they did. They got obviously, you. Obviously, people would think you can wear that in the game. It's like card Hand tat is sweet. Is that new? That hand tat? Yeah, this is um, uh, blue, uh, uh, two and blue eyes white dragon trying to show that from Yu-Gi-Oh. New, right? Yeah. That's new? Yeah, I just got this last. Oh, my God. I'm not bad at I'm bad at the camera. There huh. we go. Uh, two wedding rings, too. Really cool. Uh, I got married twice, Declare. That's nice. nice. That was beautiful. It was, it was You had a gold one and a diamond one. Literally matches with everything. And then that hand tat is sweet. Sweet hand tats Thank look you. awesome. You can't, not I like, every good, I like good hand tats. See, this is this is Hobbs from Calvin and Hobbs. <laughs> He's cute and cuddly. Yeah, he is. Catches footballs. Throws I know. Hey, I had one more question for you, Pat. Yeah. Are you all really in the WWE game? Yeah. yeah. That is so sick. Thank you. Thank you. We were pumped wow. up about it. Yeah. Not all wrestling fans yeah, are as pumped were. as you well, were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, are you time. kidding me? Like, what a fun opportunity for you guys. Because you put, like, hey, you're there. You put the hours in. You're there all the time. 
And for you to get all the boys in too, like have you and have you and AJ like fought yet in uh, the ring? Uh sure. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and sorry, I'm a big well, gamer. In the, in the video game. In the video game. You guys have fought each other? Yeah, I won, obviously. And AJ tried this flying chin thing on me, mm -hmm. but I super kicked it yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. I'm not a gamer, and neither is AJ. So it might have been the worst match in the history of WWE 2K, but it's an honor to be in there. Have you done it? Oh. Have, have you made have you made the Toxic Table Champs yet, George? Maybe take some time <laughs> and make the Toxic Table Champs out there. I need to. I need to make the time. You would be, and I know you can't because you're playing football until the wheels fall off. But like, you know it. You were built to be a WWE superstar. You, oh, yeah. you, you know, personality, your love of the business, your ability to mm -hmm. kind of physically keep up. You would have. You would have been a phenomenal WWE superstar if you did it full time. And I can't wait to see the time in which you are able to kind of dive into it a little bit. Legit. I'm. I'm looking forward to that. And I've already discussed building an extra little indoor facility so I can build a wrestling ring with my wife. So Boom. we'll get there at some point. Okay. Don't tell the don't don't tell the Niners that. Yeah, we won't. We'll dump that. Yep. We'll dump mm -hmm. that. Dump we'll dump in. that. Quick. Yeah, cut that. That's what I used to say in the receiver when I knew I was mic'd up and I said something. I was like, just cut that. Don't yeah. the cutting don't. room did you see it before it was released? Did you know what was going out before everybody else or no? Uh they sent us like highlights of all the things that we like were looking at and stuff like that. But no, it was it was a lot of it was a live reaction.